What is up, beautiful people? TJ here with another episode. Today, we are going to be, uh, we've got some orders to pack. We've got a couple things we gotta get for the store. Um, yesterday, if you saw, I actually got the, um, the pegboards put up. That was pretty neat. I actually like the way that they turned out. Um, so I may be actually adding some more of those uh, to the store in the near future. Um, if you like that, if you like the way that those uh, pegboards look, um, actually leave me a comment down in the comment section below. Today, um, I've got a few things to do at the store. Like I said, um, I've got some new shelves. They're not really shelves. They're, we've got existing shelves, but the shelves kind of have a grating on them. Um, so I bought some wood. I'm gonna have to cut that wood up and put it over the shelves. That way the, um, the products aren't gonna go through the holes and stuff like that. So I'll get that done today. Also, um, I'm starting keto today. So that's a... Uh, <laughs> That's a little new thing. So I'm going to the grocery store, get some keto stuff, some non-bread, non-carb um, things. Uh, I don't know about you, but since I've been in this quarantine, I have gained so much weight. Oh my God, it's been terrible. So I'm gonna try to get that done uh, today as well. And I'll go package those few items and we will see how it goes. <laughs> So I did want to talk a little bit about what we have actually done. When I say we, I'm talking about me and April. What we have done uh, to mitigate our losses during um, the, this pandemic that's been going on. So uh, one of the things that we've done is we've stepped up our online game. So we actually go in and um, list every single thing that will make us $1 online. Now, I know a lot of people uh, that do liquidation pallets and different things like that, they don't like... Um, you know nickel and diamond things they don't like you know stuff that's gonna make them one or two dollars but i'd rather make one or two dollars uh than have it sit on my shelf and me not make anything from it so we've been listing everything and anything that we can sell uh, and i think that's been very good for us in terms of uh keeping the revenue flowing this has actually been last month was our biggest month like ever online uh i believe and we actually only got you know two pallets and or two boxes they weren't pallets but we actually hadn't sold much from those two boxes yet so we've actually made a lot of money on our existing inventory just by getting it listed so if you are uh in a predicament where you you know you have your stores closed or you just you're just able to open back up and you kind of want to get your um if you want to kind of get some profits and things rolling uh, i suggest getting some stuff listed online that you may think uh, won't sell online or they may net you a, a smaller profit margin you know because of course you got to pay for shipping you got to pay for fees and different things like that but you can't let that deter you from making money um, that's one thing that I've learned is in during this time is you know if I can keep the income flowing we can keep the doors open so we've really tried to live by that um, we like I said we listed as much as possible as much as we could um, a list and there's certain things that you know yeah we may have shorted ourselves you know 20 30 bucks or ten dollars or you know whatever it is for the shipping and fees but like i said it's better than it sitting on my shelf um and not being able to sell it at all so another thing that we did so if you follow me on my other channel which is uh tj love lady it's just my name um I did actually put some tips on there about applying for the EIDL grant. That's actually the Emergency Injury Disaster Loan Program uh, that the feds have actually came up with. And they also have the Payroll Protection Program. So depending on if you have, if you got employees or if you have overhead costs uh, that need to be covered while you're closed, um, these two programs are available. There's a lot of drama around actually the um the programs and the funding and and who's getting the money and all this other stuff and, and i don't really pay attention to all that stuff the only thing i did was i put my name in the hat we went we applied for the eidl uh loan and actually a portion of that loan up to ten thousand dollars is a grant so you don't have to pay it back so of that ten thousand dollars me and april got one thousand dollars so that's better than nothing so we that one thousand dollars can be used for two months rent at the um at the store actually so we've utilized that because we paid last month and we paid this month um we've already paid those two months rent 
with that thousand dollars that we got so that's really good that we was able to get that so if you are in a predicament where maybe you need some funds to continue your business or if you need to um just to get some inventory or if you need to you know some help with paying your employees um i will tell you to go ahead and apply for the payroll protection program uh the eidl is not currently accepting any application so um the people that got in on the first round are probably going to end up being the only people that get funding from it just because um you know it'd it be like that sometimes but you still can apply for the payroll protection program you do have to do it through your local bank so uh, do a quick Google search for it just to kind of see the ins and outs of it. They've got uh, a lot of people that have a lot of financial knowledge are making videos and making articles about how you can get that funding if you need it. Uh, so I would tell you to do that. All right, one more thing I wanted to kind of point out is this camera that I'm using is a camera that I've had before. I hadn't used it a lot because I don't like the way the audio sounds. So the audio may sound weird especially while i'm in the car um but i did say i want to start vlogging and this is the most the easiest setup uh that that we've got so if the audio is weird i apologize it's going to be better i got some stuff coming that's going to help with the audio if it does sound weird hopefully it's not bumpy because i can kind of see it moving around but i don't know what do you guys think Another thing I want to talk about was the amount of junk uh, that you get with these liquidation pallets. A lot of people don't think about uh, actually how much junk you know you get with these pallets, and uh, there's a certain percentage that I always say, okay, it's going to be junk. It's going to be stuff that we don't need, um, but you have to be able to um, get rid of that stuff. Uh, one of the biggest problems that we have is that whenever we receive items, sometimes we receive. You know, we make, let's just say we get a crock pot and the crock pot may actually work. The body of it may work, but the lid may be shattered. Well, then we may get another crock pot that the lid is fine, but the body doesn't work. So we try to keep some parts, but we've gotten really, really good about just throwing stuff out. Um, we'll look at it, see if it works, see if it's worth selling. Um, and if it's not, we just put it in the dumpster. You know, it's not that big a deal. Um, but if you are like a hoarder or if you're somebody that really likes to keep everything in and everything you're gonna have a really really hard time with uh getting rid of stuff um you know and, and especially if you um especially when you first start out you know you're gonna get some stuff that's going to be kind of questionable um and it may take a lot of effort and a lot of time for you to get it prepped to be able to actually sell um but if you look at the actual amount of how much money you're going to get and it doesn't make sense then i err on the side of not taking the time to um to prep it to sell it you know just get rid of it and, and get something new that's just my personal thoughts about that what are your thoughts about uh getting rid of junk uh on these liquidation pallets because you do get i mean i say probably between 20 and 30 percent of the stuff you get on these liquidation pallets um are junk or things that don't work and you have to just throw them out so we for instance um we just got this bulk uh dot com pallet uh this we just got this pallet or this box from bulk.com and there were some of these um, headphones on here. These are crystal clear uh, anchor headphones. They they run between $40 and $60 um, online. I think they're listed on target.com for $79.99. So that's why I say between $40 and $60 in liquidation world. So, and like I said in my video, this stuff was all supposed to be new, but this one was actually open. Um, so I open it up, you know, these are the, the things and one of the headphones do not work. So, you know, this is something that I can sit here and I can try to fix this, or maybe I can reach out to the company and say, hey, you know, I got one headset that doesn't work. Is there any way I can get another one? How much does that cost? Um, it may not be cost efficient for me to go after trying to fix the set of headphones. I can throw it out or I can sell it for parts because somebody may have one that doesn't work and the other one does work. So maybe I can sell this for, you know, 10 or $15 just for parts. Um, you know, maybe I can't. So I think what I'll do with these, is I probably will list them as uh, for parts only. And if I can make five to $10 for it, it's better than me throwing it out and not making anything. Does that make any sense?
I really, really like the way that these turned out. So let me kind of tell you what I did um, with this. I didn't talk about this on yesterday's video. So what we did was I went through and I listed all of these items uh, on eBay. And I also listed them in the square terminal, which is our register. And so everything we have uh, has a price on it. So if you take this off, let's just say somebody comes over and buy it. When I go through and I scan it, it pops up on there as the Nintendo 3DS case, $18.99. It also adds the tax on there. You can charge them for it. So all of these items are in the uh, in our Square terminal. It actually makes it really, really easy when we're ringing people up. We don't have to know exactly what we have, where it is, or where it's located. We also also offer discounts. So like say if somebody buys this and I say, well, I give it to you for $10. I can go in and quickly change the price of this to $10 and it'll add the tax in and everything uh, else. So I'm going to pick the items that we sold today. Uh, we did sell this Fitbit uh, Aria uh, scale. It's actually brand new. Uh, I think we got this on. I can't remember where we got this from. But we sold that. And then we sold... I believe it was this uh, Fruticus Surfer Hair Power Power Putty. Uh, we actually sold this, so I get these two items um, packaged up, and we will head out. All right, so I got everything um, packaged up. I'm gonna go drop everything off at the post office, and I'm pretty much done at the store for today. Tomorrow. I'm um, trying to get over here a little bit earlier. I said that today. Uh, so if you look at the time right now, it's 5.47 in the afternoon. I have been literally asleep all day. I don't know what's wrong with me. I am going on night shift at my nine to five job. So uh, that's why I kind of been staying up a little bit later. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be it for today. If you like these types of videos, please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.